We can start by defining the domain of the boundary value problem. Here, we can use symmetry to model only a 2D axisymmetric section of the vessel. With Workbench open, start by dragging static structural into the project schematic. Rename it Pressure Vessel to help with organization. Next, right click on Geometry and select Properties to open the Properties pane if it's not already open. On the right side, change the Analysis Type to 2D. This tells the solver that the governing equations will involve displacements in two directions. Then, double click Geometry to open Discovery. Once Discovery has opened, click on the menu icon in the top left corner and select Settings. In the new window, go to Units in Display Precision, and if it has not already been modified, change Unit System to Imperial, and make sure Length is set to Inches. Also, change the Minor Grid Spacing to 0.1 inches. This is more appropriate for the scale of the geometry we will be creating. You can then close this window. Next, select the Sketch tool if it has not already been selected. Click the Z-axis so we know we are sketching on the correct plane, and press the V key on your keyboard to orient the view to be facing this plane. This is important because the mechanical solver assumes the symmetry axis is this Y-axis, so the orientation is essential for creating our geometry. Next, under the Sketch Tools in the top bar, select the Line Tool. Hover over the origin, and you should see a small green circle appear, showing you are selecting the desired point. Left-click to begin creating the line. Move your cursor to the right of the origin. A dimension should appear near the line. This is a good check that the units have been correctly changed to inches. If you see something different, ensure you change the units correctly and close and reopen discovery if necessary. When you see the correct units appear, hover your cursor over the x-axis and you should see that it is highlighted green. Left click to complete the line. From here, move your cursor upwards to start to create a vertical line. Ensure that a right angle mark is visible between this new line and the horizontal line you created so that the lines are perpendicular. And left click to create another line. Repeat this process to form the L-shaped geometry, ensuring that each additional line is perpendicular to the previous line. These lines can be arbitrary in length, as they will all be constrained later. Once the shape is created, if any of the lines were not horizontal or vertical, note that you can fix this by selecting Constraints and choosing either Horizontal or Vertical to correspond to the line you wanted to create. Clicking the line will force it to be straight. Next, select the Dimension tool in the top bar. 
We will use this to constrain the length of our lines in our geometry. Start by clicking on the right vertical line. Move your cursor outside the shape and left click to create the dimension. Next, click on the dimension, enter 9, and click enter. If we zoom out, we can see that this made the line 9 inches long. Next, zoom back in near the origin and click on the short vertical line. Again, left click to create the dimension and click on the dimension to change it. We want to set the thickness of the pressure vessel to be 0.5 inches. So enter 0.5 and click enter. We can see that this had the desired effect. We want the bottom and right sides of the pressure vessel to have the same thickness. So zoom out, navigate to the top line using the middle mouse button, and zoom back in. Again, click on the top line. Click to create the dimension, select it, and enter 0.5. Finally, zoom back out, navigate to the bottom horizontal line, click it to create a dimension, click to set the dimension, and edit it to be 1.5 inches. This fully defines our geometry. Press escape to exit the dimension tool. And with this complete, we can select 3D mode in the top bar to turn these curves into the desired surface. and we can zoom out to view the whole surface. This completes our geometry, so we can close Discovery. Back in the Workbench window, make sure to save your project to a useful location.